everyone, it's Denise Love, and I am back today with another little art haul because my palette full packs comes in. You know, it comes in like a week later than the sketch box. And I hate to wait, you know, a couple weeks before I can even do my sketch box one. So I thought, because I've gathered up a couple things and I have a couple things, the a few books that I have collected recently that I haven't ever shown you. And I thought, well, I'll do a little mini art haul. Um, since my palette came in and I've got some super fun things that I have ordered to try. Um, I love graphite stuff. Don't think there's no secret about that. And I came across while I was looking for something else on Amazon, some texture paste, which I know there's texture paste out there. I use molding paste uh, a lot of times with stencils to give you a nice 3D element. But I never realized that they're now making the texture paste where you don't have to mix stuff in yourself. Like I'm sure you could take molding paste and graphite powder and make your own graphite texture paste. Um, and I have a thing of graphite powder. So at one point we might experiment with that but now they make a graphite texture paste and so I'm actually very excited to give this a try this is um, I'll link it below this is by Finnabar that might be what that's Finnabar I can't read that it says art extra Vaganor texture paste graphite I'll put a link below the video, um, but basically it's a transparent, flexible, permanent acrylic gloss meeting with natural white sand grains, providing texture, dimension, porous effect, mixes with pigments, inks, and paints, and allows to create custom texture paste with visible grain. Works on most surfaces, including canvas, wood, paper, metal chipboard, fabric, plastic, etc. can be painted with acrylic paints, apply with palette knives for a textured look, water-based, archival, and non-toxic. So I haven't really seen anybody use this. I'm sure there are plenty of things out there where people do, but I haven't come across it. And I'm hoping it'll just give me some 3D effect um, through a stencil possibly. And then I thought we should try some stencil butters. Like I said, I've, I mostly use um, uh, molding paste for things that I did with stencils but you know uh, these uh, stencil butters have come out over the past several years and I've just never played with them and I thought mm, let's just get into textured stencil stuff so I bought um, several colors and then a pack of colors I bought uh, beach beach grass dune oyster ocean mist and then a four pack and these are put out by the crafters workshop and this pack contains like the silver, the gold, the copper, and a, and a black, I believe. So I thought those would be fun to play in. And you don't have to buy stencil butters. You can use molding paste or some type of um, plaster to do the same thing. And you could mix color in with it and get colored plaster paste. But I just thought they would be fun to play in because I don't have any of those in my stash here. So you know that the Kiritake watercolors are my very favorite <laughs> and there's another brand out there of these Ganza Tanby paints and I think they're called Kissimo. let me look them up these are Kisso k-i-s-s-o-h and I got the Ganzai 72 piece um, Japanese watercolor set um, off of Amazon and so I like the 72 because I think there may be a hundred piece set also. Um, this was stocked in a local warehouse and took two days to come. Whereas the hundred piece set was coming from Japan and guesstimated two to three weeks. So I, I settled for the hundred piece, but you know, I have enough of the Kuratakis already where I'm sure I've got plenty of watercolors to last me forever. But this one had more colors and I like trying out different brands of things just to see is it different do I like it how does it work differently the box on this is so pretty I wish that we packaged things here as beautifully as this um, so I love this and I like the size like this is the whole set of 72 it's this big whereas the uh, Kuretake ones it takes a couple of them I like how these all fit in the same one and ooh, look at these all right and I'm gonna try not to mess up the order of these because 
one of my lovely people in my group shared this with me because they love to enable me to buy more art supplies just like I enable all of you guys um, and she said they're not really marked okay so I do see they're not really marked with like the color uh, besides a number on the back side and so I might look them up and write the name on these with a sharpie before I get them all out of order completely um, but look at that and it's got two layers I love it and so this seems to be kind of your general colors and then you've got your metallics and your pearls and your neons look at those neons holy moly these seem to be a little fuller than the Ganzai than the Kiritake ones because I've got those right here seems to be a similar size pan maybe even a bit bigger so it's, it's the same size pan, but these are definitely kind of filled to the top where these are kind of half filled. But they do go a long way. Like I've been using these all year on all kinds of projects here on this channel. And, you know, I'm still not actually completely used any of these 100%. Um, but this does seem to be a little bit fuller. So I am actually very excited to give out another Ganzai Tansy um, watercolor a try because I love them they're very gouache like um, they're made a little different than Western watercolors and I love that difference and so colors might be the same they might be slightly different but we definitely have something fun to play with so I'm feeling like maybe we're gonna play in those a little bit so I'm gonna set those to the side for a moment so I've got a few really cool books that I have just kind of collected and put to the side and this one my aunt recommended because she knows I've been playing this year a lot in watercolors and I don't normally, I haven't traditionally been a watercolor artist or played in watercolors very much. But I got hooked on these um, Kuretakis and just experimenting and I kind of go through waves and what I like to create and the different materials that I like to play in and I went through a whole oil and coal wax phase and I went through a whole acrylic paint phase and I went through a whole acrylic pouring phase and I went through a, a whole acrylic ink phase and now I seem to be playing in all the watercolors and then mixing a lot of media on top of that and so next year I'm sure I'll be into some other phase whatever interests me and went through a whole graphite phase and tinted charcoal with these blocks that I love so much that are so much fun and so I just seem to be like a little butterfly and be like "Ooh, what's the next shiny art thing that I can play in and so it's really fun that I do things like the YouTube channel and the Skillshare channel and my own website and stuff because even with the photography Photography, I kind of flitted from thing to thing until I was like, okay, I've got it. Let's move on to the next photography thing like macro and food photography and, you know, portraiture and still life and then changing all the different lenses out and then getting into specialty lenses and then getting into antique lenses. And you can see how you can just kind of drive further and further into your hobby until you're like, huh, I feel a little saturated with this. Let me move on to the next exciting thing. Whereas I know some artists go their whole life as a specific uh, type of material, pastel artist, oil painting artist, acrylic artist. They stick with their medium and they, they master that medium. I'm more like a like a Jill of all trades and maybe a master of none. And that's fine with me because that's what I enjoy. You just have to see, you know, what do you enjoy and ride that path while you've got it. So she recommended painting with watercolors on canvas. And I tend to not work on canvas anymore. I've worked on canvas panels and canvas... Um, mounted canvas and I've mounted on flat canvas and I've worked on paper and I've worked on cradle boards and I've worked on flat boards and you name it and it's, if it's out there I've tried it but the problem that I have is my goal is not to sell art my goal is to create and have fun and teach other people to create and have fun and do fun projects and I like to work on paper and I like to keep the pieces that I create because I use them as samples and examples and some things I frame up and hang in the house and some things I will give away but most of the time it's used I keep them because I like to have them as future examples or or things that I might use again and so canvas and board are hard to store and you know big artists you see their their studios and they've got you know 100 canvases stacked up taking half the room and I don't have the room for that and I don't wish to keep canvases forever like that so I choose to work on paper 
on purpose. That is a conscious choice that after years of trying everything, I'm like, huh, okay, this is what works for me. <laughs> but she thought, because she is a canvas painter, she paints on canvas and paper and all kinds of stuff too. She thought it'd be kind of fun to experiment painting watercolors on canvas. So if that's something that you have an interest in, it's not something I plan on teaching. Um, this is by Lid Chatterton, C-H-A-D-E-R-T-O-N. Um, there is some information out there and this is it. And you could check it out and see, you know, is this gonna be something that works for you if you want to go the canvas route? So I thought I would just kind of let you know that it's out there and I'm gonna read through it and just see kind of like what is the technique because I'll be honest, I got it and I set it to the side thinking, ooh, it's gonna be good to read in the winter when I'm sitting in my living room and I just want something creative to look at. I might be reading this. This is a book that I got recently, but it's not a brand new book. Um, so just interesting if you want to see how they prep surfaces to paint on that are just not already watercolor paper. And then this is fun Wabi Sabi for artists, designers, poets, and philosophers. And it's just a book about the way of life and how you can live a little bit of Wabi Sabi and more in tune. Wabi Sabi is the quintessential Japanese, see I love all things Japanese, <laughs> aesthetic. It's a beauty of things imperfect, impermanent, and incomplete. Which, you know, that right there, that's right up my alley because I'm not looking for the perfect. I'm looking for a lot of times the imperfect, the imperfect line, the imperfect uh, application of paint. I don't want everything to be pretty and straight. I was a drafter for many years coming out of school and then I worked in CAD programs. Um, as a career up until I started my photography business 11 years ago. And I'm tired of precision. I don't want anything to be a straight line ever again, perhaps. <laughs> so I love the imperfect and the beauty in the imperfect in the abstract and the art that I create. It is a beauty of things modest and humble. It is a beauty of things unconventional, which I love that word unconventional. I did a whole photography series on using unconventional lenses. So using something that's not the norm, it's not something everybody else in the world is gonna do. How can you push outside your comfort zone and whatever art it is that you're doing and how can you, you know, use things that nobody else is using? Maybe you're using antique tools. I was using antique lenses and manual lenses and things that didn't just shoot a plain picture with art things. I'm always experimenting with different materials. Maybe not everything is an art supply. Maybe it's something we got from the hardware store. So how can, or maybe it's a packing supply, um, which we use to make marks and stuff. And I brought these out to show you. These are recent things I got in the mail. <laughs> and how can we push what we're doing and the techniques that we're using into the unconventional things that not everybody's doing? I don't love this concept. Um, so this is just a fun book that I plan on reading in my little book stack here for the work about going into winter and just taking it in and soaking it in and seeing how can I apply, apply some of the concepts that maybe I'm already kind of interested in, but how can I dive deeper in it? So we will see. So I thought that was a fun little book that I came across. Okay, so this one I saw because I love Joe Packham and this is the publishers of Somerset Studio which is one of the magazines that I've gotten for years and years and years um, and where women create I get all those where women uh, series and collected those for more than 10 years I mean I have like practically every up uh, every um, magazine that they made I just love them so much um, and this is the book of organization the art of creating order and I don't know if you watched my studio tour already but there is a studio tour and I have a playlist of studio stuff um, on my page but what I really love in my studio is coming up with interesting ways to contain the chaos and make an order out of what really could be very a chaotic messy room because every corner has a purpose here in my art room i've got one corner that's good for art making with my art supplies and some cabinets beside me i've got one corner that's for photography i've got a corner where i you know have a desk that i can work out if i needed to do computer work or maybe 
make a welcome video and then I have a closet with photography goodies and I have another closet with more art goodies and it's kind of my goal you know to organize and create and I kind of feel like a change is coming so I've had this studio set up this way for more than a year maybe maybe even a little longer than that I don't know I lose track of time and the photography corner because I'm just shifting further and further into art things the big gigantic black canvas that I have on the wall for photography is less necessary and so now I'm thinking well I could pull that canvas down and I could utilize that wall for some type of art thing like could be art supplies it could be uh, more cabinetry over there to store stuff it could be um, the boxes stacked on top of each other you know that I could put stuff in um, kind of Ikea style I don't know I'm just now I'm kind of feeling like I'm moving further into art and more further away from the photography things for a while because to be quite honest having a photography business for more than a decade I'm a little burned out on all things teaching photography because I've deep dived into everything you can deep dive into and now I'm like okay I need a I need a mental break from that for a while and I love art books and art things that picture art supplies and things that show storage and different ideas on how to store things and creative spaces and such and so I thought oh yeah I'm gonna add this yummy book to my library because it's kind of like my art studio ideas Pinterest board I just love pinning different art studios and the way that people have organized and used their space and so I thought who hoo, 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 might have some new ideas for some changes that I want to do on the photography corner I still want a table at the window that I can use for photography because even with all the art stuff that I create um, I still go take photos of everything and so I need that space to photograph but all I need is the table at the window I don't need the whole wall look at that right there Whoa! I love that right there <laughs> so this super super fun book thought I would share that with you oh look at that giant gallery wall Arr! I need that right there <laughs> oh look at this and see shelves for all the paints and stuff and bottles see see has some, such good ideas so I'm gonna let my mind wander through all the lovely ideas here in the book of organization the art of creating order so yum it yum and then this book I it was in my Amazon recommendations and I like gel plate printing and I don't do a ton of it here on the YouTube channel but I do have a couple of gel plate printing classes and on Skillshare and what I like about this is this kind of aesthetic kind of fits more into the way I like to do gel plate printing I want the print to be more like a piece of art when I'm done left less crafty more artsy I'm not sure um, if that's gonna translate the way I'm saying that but I want it to be more of um, kind of a higher a higher purpose than just a craft or a collage paper and so I liked um, the look of the art pieces in here they were a little more elevated and more abstract in the feel and they weren't like I'm gonna have to cut this up and use it in a piece of collage feel like a lot of the uh, papers that people create on the jelly plater for and a lot of times too you know making a layer of look how pretty that is using those distressed inks doing a layer of paint and painting on top of it is another option to do that too but I liked some of the ideas in here and the looks that it created and so I thought ooh, this would be a nice way to elevate what I already kind of want to do with the gel plate myself and just to get new ideas on how to do that so it looks like a beautiful book look at here this is the kind of thing that inspired all the textures that I created in photography photography for a decade um, because you know the photography side of my business was a little creative business on how to turn your photography into more of a piece of art not just a straight photo and, and in doing that I made it made textures that you then combined with your photos in like Photoshop and this right here is the kind of thing that I would look for as inspiration and I would photograph that um, for textures and you could actually like photograph every 
piece of that wall to get different textures and um, old buildings with paint peeling was one of my very favorite things to look for and walls inside abandoned houses and things like that and then you combine those in with your photos and they just looked amazing so I already like abstract things because I did that for so long I was already doing that and I've just changed that a little bit with the art that I do now and the abstract painting that I do now but look how beautiful that is that right there Wah! that kind of makes me want to go make some textures again <laughs> I think I've made more textures than anybody on the planet since I did it for 10 years I've made like more than probably 50,000 textures it's insane so this is gel plate printing for mixed to media art taking your visual story telling to a new level this is by Robin McClendon M-C-C-L-E-N-D-O-N and it just looks like a beautiful book to sink yourself into especially if you love jelly plate and you're wanting to elevate it past say some collage papers so yummy book to find and these are some packaging some materials that I, this was um the wrapper of a dog toy but it kind of looks like the stuff that they wrap vegetables in too and i thought you know i collect these anything that looks interesting that you get in the mail or the grocery store that you think oh yummy texture save that for something that you could use um, as a texture in your art we could use so I got two of these these actually had dog toys in them little Kong little Kong tennis balls for my little tiny dogs <laughs> and I thought wait don't throw that away that's cool stuff but it also looks like some stuff I've seen vegetables wrapped in and then this was something that came with uh, something that was a towel rack for my bathroom it kind of came in there and I thought huh it's kind of cool and maybe I'll need that I could punch stuff in because I have the pinprick art class that I have on uh, Skillshare and that would have been perfect for pin pricking because I could have I saved two pieces I could have had the whole piece of paper here and then pin pricked through it like it would have been the perfect surface to just prick a hole through so I thought oh I'm gonna save that and then of course bubble wrap always a fun medium um, and this was like the perfect size so it's not like some great big sheet that I have to store somewhere it's some little piece I can put in my my uh, stencil box <laughs> so I just want to point out save anything that looks interesting that you get in the mail or you find at the grocery store um, good at mark making things okay palette full packs I have a feeling and I have not opened it I just cut the tape right before I started the video I have a feeling that this might be marker month because it was marker month at sketchbox so no high hopes here might be markers <laughs> <laughs> Let's just see. Oh, oh, oh markers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did I call it or did I call it? Oh, okay, here we go. Graphics. Okay, so this looks like a little set of fine liners. Oh yes. 020408 and a brush. So I do like fine liners because those run out if you use them enough. Um, this is Tombow's art pro that's a nice little selection of colors so these are alcohol ink pens dual tip with the marker the brush tip uh, brush tip and chisel tip and you can layer to get gradients so these are marker these are alcohol ink markers oh yeah oh look okay i will say good job on the range of colors but there's no yellow or oranges so Okay, we are missing some of that, but that's okay. Oh, fun sticker. I love how they give you a little sticker in there. And then it looks like our pad of paper is probably a marker pad. Yep, marker pad. Okay, so there we go, marker pad. So I called it. I called it marker month. <laughs> okay, and I will say marker month is not my favorite. So, eh, I do like the graphics pins. Good job there. All right, so I think what we're going to do is pull out these Genza Tambis by uh, Kisso. Was that right? Um, I'll link them below and see how those are different. And then we might look at one of our stencil butters or our texture paste. I don't know. We'll just see what we can create. So I'll be right back. All right. So I've, I'm going to pull a color card and I pulled out. The, the crazier the colors, the more 
I like the finished piece. And so now I find myself hunting through the little color cubes. So I pulled a color cube from deck two uh, by Sarah Renee Clark. So I find myself now sometimes, sometimes I do a blind pull because I want to be completely surprised. But now I like the weird palettes that you're like, whoa, never would have pulled these colors in a million years. And I'm kind of thinking that I want to try these out and see how close can we get. We might not be able to get close, but then again, this is enough colors where surely we can get close out of these 72 colors. <laughs> so I'm kind of feeling like maybe, see that's a little, bright. let's see, is there a brighter one? Okay, I think there is, let's try this. And I just wanna see what can we get, cause why not? <laughs> creating in a way that you're like hmm, why not is so much more satisfying than it is to create when you're like trying hard and not making it wherever you're trying to go who knows what these colors are I'm gonna tell you the numbers on the bottom in a second looks like I only got one lavender which is a little bit brighter but that's okay We do have this one that's kind of sparkly over here. I like that. And we've got like a tan, so maybe let's pull this gold since we've got a tan. Let's pull this gold. Okay, that's gonna be our crazy color palette. So we got a gold, number 58. And then we've got an orange that's number four. And 155 for this bright color. And I picked number one for this kind of maroon shade. And I picked 47 for this lavender, which it's way brighter than that lavender, but kind of fits in with this palette. And remember, my goal is to not be exacty, exacty. My goal is to work within a color palette I never would have picked or thought about. And if we're close, good. And if we're slightly off, that's fine. We're still within a color range that I would never have played in. And I thought, why not do, let me just saturate those a little bit. Why not do some color totems? Cause you know, I like them, <laughs> some art totems. Um, Cause these to me look like totem poles. And then we could do some mark making on top. We could do some stencil paste on top. So let's just see. Let's just see where we get today. And these colors are crazy. So I can't wait to see how do I like them compared to, you know, something else that we've done before. And I'm doing kind of the freestyle totem where I'm just kind of filling it in. This is my Princeton Aqua Elite number 12. And I'm just going for it not trying to get anything perfect or exact. I dropped some water on that and it made some blooming. So that's kind of interesting. We could come back with some water and add to that. And so with the art totems, I just stripe it up. I almost feel like these are maybe a little more transparent than the Kuratakis. So let's pull one of these colors out of here. Let's pull this lavender because I kind of want to see. And this lavender is a little closer to our color too. So let's, let's wet that lavender down. Maybe I'll use both of these lavenders and we'll just see because this does actually feel a tiny bit more transparent than the Kuratakis. And it may not be, it just may be my imagination, but I'm just saying, just initial thoughts here. Could be how I've dunked the brush. I might not be as heavy handed today as I am sometimes. Let's do some fun, interesting stripes. I do like this color. This is a fun color. Could 
could be my imagination because that is about the same as I put that purple one on. So we'll say it's about the same. That was number 13 lilac, but I did feel like I was getting not as opaque, but that it could just have been my imagination. <laughs> There's no doubting. Sometimes I make up stuff in my mind. Ooh, look at that. Oh, look at that. I like to watch the color run, and that was super fun with that gold. That was fun. Ooh, let's let that run some more. Look at that right there. Okay, that's fun. So it's fun to overlap some wet on wet and some wet on dry. Ooh, look what that's doing right there. And then just come back and do some other things on top. It's all about having fun and adding some interest with these fun All right, I think I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll mark make on top of this and maybe do some stencil stuff. So let me let this dry for a moment and I'll be right back. All right, that has dried and I'm kind of thinking now, let's do some mark making. And I'm not really interested in mark making with alcohol ink pens, but we could give it a try since that's what I have. Let's just get a pair of scissors. I'm kind of thinking these pinks might be cool for some marks. So let's just open these up and see. Oh my gosh, I hate when they make the package so hard to open because they tape everything down or that was still wet. Whoa! <laughs> now I feel like I need to smush that. So let's take some bubble wrap and smush that. Oh yeah, see, there we go. See? Nothing. Oh, and then we can get some color on the one below it. <laughs> so nothing, don't despair. Nothing is ever set in stone and final. All right, so we just may never get into this. Rah, call me. I'm going to do like the, like the Hulk. Just call me the Hulk. There we go. So, the Hulk, I got a funny story for you. Um, so these are the pink tones, the rose tones, and the Tombows as I throw that package away. But I went to uh, Dragon Con years ago, like 10 years ago. It's been a while. And I got to see some people like the Hulk. I saw, I saw Blue Ferrigno. They have like a, so we got a brush and a chisel tip. All right, so that's kind of interesting. Let's do some mark making. So I got to meet Lou Ferrigno, who was the Incredible Hulk, the original one. Um, so that was pretty cool. And then doesn't his son now, Junior, play in that show SWAT? I might be remembering wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's in SWAT. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I met Lou Ferrigno. And then I met haha, the cast of I Dream a Genie. You know that show, that's a tiny bit before my time, but I do remember as a kid watching I Dream a Genie. It was one of my favorite shows. I loved it. Let's see, what else do I want to do? And so I got to meet Barbara Eden, lovely lady, even at the age that I got to meet her, so lovely. And then Larry Hagman was there. And he was, that was kind of weird. He, um, kind of off in a corner by himself like he was taking a break sitting in his very tall custom made looked like um like a director's chair it was real tall and had his name on it and he had like on like a little boating hat like he was a boat captain he was kind of off on his own i think he might have been getting a little break from signing autographs because um, when they're there they're signing they're selling prints of themselves and autographs on the print and at the time we were completely broke. So I went down there with a friend of mine and her husband. So the, the goal of the day was just to take pictures and have some fun. So I didn't buy the autograph and I'm so sad I don't have that because I absolutely loved her as a kid. And still, if I catch an episode on TV, 
Um, and recently I saw too, I think some of those episodes might be on YouTube. I'll have to look. Um, I stopped and watched because I loved Jeannie and her little Jeannie bottle. And I swear my grandmother had one of those uh, Jeannie shaped bottles from the 60s in her house. And I don't know where that ended up after she passed away, but it was cool. So now I'm just playing and mark making and just seeing what we can get. Oh, that was bright, much brighter than I expected, but we'll keep going. And Dragon Con, I don't know if you've ever been to any of those like Dragon Con or Comic Con or anything in those little cons, <laughs> conventions. Um, it was really fun and there was a lot of people watching to be had, which is what we were kind of going down there to do, but it was so packed that it was actually miserable. Like for reals, like it was too many people. You couldn't even enjoy the people watching because there were too many people. And uh, and it, it's in downtown, like here it was in downtown Atlanta and it they had several streets shut off so they could do the parade to start it off or whenever that parade happened and it's so many people packing the streets that you couldn't even enjoy the parade <laughs> i'm telling you so yeah hmm. all right so let's see i've got some fine liners out here these are those graphics and these are nice little pointy pieces so we can see here what other fun marks can oh yeah this one's good You know, the fun thing about doing totems is especially if you like, if you like Zentangle or anything where you're mark making, um, it's the perfect thing to test out supplies that you might want to mix because you've got the stripes of stuff and then it's perfect to test out new tools and it's perfect to test out mark making and to play and experiment with your mark making. Um, so play play with these what different ideas can you come up with in the totems and if you you like exact and fun and perfect go for it if you like exact imperfect kind of messed up and not perfect which is kind of what i prefer i do that on purpose I'm not looking for perfect um, then go for that it's all your preference there on what you want to create and how you want to create it don't let somebody tell you that you've done something the wrong way um, let's put our hands put our little paint stick over here for our hand I touched something that was still slightly wet but that's how you get into like your own style if you will create what feels good to you if you like imperfect and sloppy kind of messy um, like I do, go for that. If you like perfect, go for that. Your choice. You're in the hot seat. Your decision. Be brave. It's just paper. It's just paint. Don't be scared to mess something up. You can always start another one. And sometimes I know we put a lot of work into stuff. But if you mess up one part of something, don't be afraid to cut it up. Then it's still not ruined. If you feel like you ruined it, just cut it up into something else. I'm all about cutting stuff up. <laughs> I love to cut. Lots of times I start off piece thinking, all right, this is a cut up art day. It doesn't even matter what we create. We're cutting it up. <laughs> okay. Yay for the fine liner pens. I like the way those work. Alcohol inks are good for mark making, so yay for the Tombows. So we can mark make with those. I like what that did. That was good mark making. All right, so now I'm kind of thinking, let's get out a stencil. And let's stencil on top of these. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? I want to test out. I want to test out some ideas. So let me grab a stencil and I'll be right back. So this was some stencils that I got off of Amazon like some Mandela stencils but this one has some a few elements in it that are that are kind of striped you get these all out of here they're stuck in the bag but they kind of have some striped stuff to it or like some elements like that that I could go all the way across I'm kind of feeling that and I kind of like this right here where we could go all the way down Ooh, 
Oh, I'm feeling that right there. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm feeling that. Um, but I've got some others we could do. You know, you could do some of these Mandela ones are so cool. That's a pretty cool stripe there. This one, I liked this little element here. Ooh, we could do that there too. All right. I'm kind of feeling like this one. And I think uh, we could do stencil paste. I want to look at this and even see what this looks like. I'm kind of thinking that this stuff, I kind of want to do something dark and moody and gothic. But at the same time, I kind of want to look at it. So what it looks like is gray concrete. All right, so that's exactly what I thought it would look like. And it looks like the consistency of the molding paste. So I think if you put molding paste in graphite powder, you'll get that exact look. That's what I was thinking it would be. Kind of thinking maybe we'll try some pearl white stencil butter here. Um, which I kind of feel like might be pigment and paste also. And maybe a little bit of water making it slightly thinner. And I'm going to put this on with a palette knife which I've got plastic palette knives and metal palette knives. So that kind of could be, ooh, I've also got um, silicone shapers. Those will be good. All right, so I'm not sure where I've put all the plastic palette knives. So for right now, which is kind of funny because I have like a whole cup full of them. They're just hiding from me today. Or I've put them over there on one of my rolly carts which that's probably pretty likely. All right, we'll use this. So what, what I'm thinking is just right down the center, see what we can get here. And I'm kind of centering it based on what I can see on each side. And I'm just going to, you know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> Tape it a little bit so it doesn't completely move the whole time I'm doing this. What about that? All right, let's do that. Feeling good about that. And then, We're just gonna see how it works out. Now the thing with like the paste or the molding paste or anything that you're putting on nice and thick like this, you're gonna have to wait for this to dry before you can do anything else to these, like cut them apart or whatever, because now you're kind of adding dry time into your piece, which that's a pain. But I'm warning you, oh, I think that one went underneath, darn it. Just do the best you can. Just do the best you can. And it's the first time we're kind of playing with it. So your first time, that might not be perfect. So don't do this for the first time on something that is important to you. Let me repeat that. Don't do it on something important. I want you to practice with this stuff. You don't have to start every piece thinking, because I used to do this, I get it right there with you. Not every piece you create is the masterpiece. You've got to have some practice pieces and experiment and learn how to use your tools. So if this piece doesn't turn out perfect. It's not a big deal. We know right now that this is the first time that you're trying the paste and you're trying to kind of get your technique and maybe your tools and you're looking at things and you're kind of figuring and you're deciding and it doesn't matter if it comes out perfect or not. So that takes off the pressure. All right, so that was the white because I kind of feel like with this um, dark one, I could do like some graphite watercolors and then a lovely mandala in this texture paste on top, something like that. All right, so we could maybe let it dry, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. Okay, so one thing that I noticed now is some of this goes underneath the stencil, which I don't mind that, but that's kind of an interesting observation. So that could be how I put it on. It could be how I forced it through the back. Um, there's a lot of reasons why that could be. So that's something that next time I do this, I'm going to no, I'll know that it does that and I can adjust my technique and practice and play a little bit differently and just see like what what could I do different next time. So if you have secrets because you're already an expert at doing that with the stencil paste, feel free to put those down below. This was all about experimenting for me. So we're going to let that dry before we can cut these apart. Um, but that was interesting. Now I kind of want to try that 
the other one for reals. Let's pull this apart. Um, if you've got secrets on how to do that, and you can keep on adding to all your layers until you feel like you're done. If you've got some secrets, go ahead and put those secrets in the comments for everybody. Because these are fun. And I don't hate it. And it's kind of got some texture up under there, which I actually kind of like. With the molding paste, the molding paste is thicker. It's by uh, like Liquitex or Golden. So with the molding paste, I did not have seepage underneath the stencil. And you know what else you could do? There's probably that stencil stuff where you could like tack a stencil down. It's like a spray, like a glue almost. Tack it down and then do your stencil work and then pick it up and it didn't go underneath. Um, but that's very interesting. I like that experiment of that and seeing what that what that looks like. I like it. So super fun. Hope you enjoyed testing out some of these fun supplies and getting a look at these uh, Kisso watercolors. Let me tell you one last funny story. I was <laughs> looking at these thinking is it kiss ho or kiss o? It's K I S S O H. And then I was thinking, that sounds like kiss a ho. And that's how I can remember that kiss a ho. <laughs> because, you know, with art and stuff, um, the way I remembered art pieces in college, like Botticelli's Birth of Venus, where it's the Venus lady on a clam shell, basically standing on the shell. I thought Birth of Venus um, could be Venus in a boat, and boat is Botticelli, and Venus is jogging my memory of this is Venus, and the boat could also be the clam shell she's standing in, so it could be, you know, Birth of Venus by Botticelli is Venus in a boat. And so that's kind of how I'm thinking of these watercolors and remembering the name. They're going to now always be in my mind, kiss a hoe, <laughs> like kiss a hoe. <laughs> Anyway, hope you enjoyed this fun extra little art haul that we had, and I will see you next time. <laughs>